one. Here we will see how Python, using the built-in modules of struct and wave, writes a wave file. In contrast, in the next tutorial we discuss writing numpy arrays to wave files. Finally, in the tutorial after that, we use a music synthesis package C sound to do the same. 2. Any periodic signal is a sum of many sine and cosine waves. For the square wave, this link shows the Fourier components of the different frequencies. 3. This is the web page. 4. At the end of the web page, we can find the result. 5. Now we will use the first three Fourier coefficients to construct a C4 note signal. The C4 frequency is 261.626 Hz. The period of any wave is the inverse of frequency, and in this case it is about 3.8 milliseconds. In a wave file, there are 44,100 samples every second, and thus we can see how many samples form one period of wave. 6. The result is simply the product of the period, in seconds, and 44,100 samples per second. This gives a value of nearly 168. I could also have rounded off to 169. Even with 168, we see that the frequency is 262.5 Hz, which is close to the C4 frequency. 7. We need 168 samples according to this function. 8. This is the Python program to plot the first Fourier component. 9. The first two lines are import statements. Sometimes you will use from statements to import functions and data. Here we imported the sin function and pi data from the built-in math module. This means that from now on, we can refer to pi as just pi and not math.py. We also imported the graphical library with an alias so we can access its functions and data with only plt and dot and then the relevant function or data. 10. Next we create three variables. One is integer n equal to one period, that is 168. X is a list from 0 to 167 and is created by the range function. Finally we create the Y variable. It has 168 elements and all are 0. 11. Finally in line 6 and 7 there is a block, as can be seen from the collapse symbol which notepad plus plus put i is and index which iterates over all values in x that is from 0 to 167 thus defining all 168 terms according to the mathematical formula 12 in line 8 we duplicate the list three times so its size becomes 3n for periodic functions it is not necessary to make any more calculations since the numbers will be identical 13. We next make the x coordinate go from 0 to 3n, minus 1. 14. Finally this shows the plot of y over 3n values. 15. Next is the Python program for 3 Fourier coefficients. Now there are 3 sine terms with different frequencies, and 3 different Fourier coefficients. It should be noted, that there are no cosine terms in a square wave. 16. This is the graph of the wave with three frequency components. It is more square-like. Note it is not between minus one and plus one, but has overshoots. 17. We can calculate how many periods we need to stretch the sound to make a five second sound. We can see that 1313 periods are necessary for a wave file of that duration. 18. This is the second half of the program sin 1313py which is on pythonaudio.blogspot.com. Below this slide, we use the wave module to write a wave file. We need to enter four parameters, line 16 through 19. For line 16, we can put 1 for mono and 2 for stereo. A large binary string is created using the packing function and it is written out using the write from raw function. Then the file is closed that is written. 
19. This is the WAV file opened in Audacity. 20. By selecting any large portion of audio, or even the entire 5 seconds of audio, and going to the Analyze menu option of Plot Spectrum, we get the Frequency Spectrum, with three components. 21. Finally, this is the program, when Y is square wave, that is either minus 1 or plus 1 at different times. The complete program is at pythonaudio.blogspot.com including the saving portion. 22. The resulting WAV file is opened in Audacity. Actually, you can open in any audio program. 23. This is the frequency components, showing the large number of components. 24. You may go to pythonaudio.blogspot.com to get the slides. To see a larger image of the slide, you can click on them at that page, which provides easy navigation controls. The text for the audio of the slides as well, as any relevant source code is also on that page.